When we return from the production in Ghana, the workload of post-production was so much more than we anticipated, I can hardly express it. We came back with about 30 hours of footage and, and this was something that we tackled through um, many, many hours of, of logging all of the footage, organizing it, talking really, really in depth about what we wanted to cut, what we wanted to keep and how we were gonna approach uh, making this film and it was really the type of situation where we had to craft the story in post-production because with a documentary film you don't have a script written you just have so much footage that you have available to you and you kind of are writing it in uh, the editing booth so we were taking notes and we had a cork board up with all of the different scenes that we felt might be relevant to the theme and uh, what we were trying to portray in the film and we would organize the themes in the order we thought they would go and hang them up and then write notes specifically about them, what shots fit best where, um, what interview segments we were going to use and really started to craft it out on paper first and then uh, put it into the editing program. The upside to this was that we had so much beautiful footage of the village in Ghana and this family that if we decided we needed something that we hadn't previously talked about, if we decided we wanted to add a portion to the film or change a portion, we had the footage to do it and we had the coverage and uh, it was just a matter of, of looking through our notes on the footage and finding it. And so that was, that was something that made it a lot easier knowing that we had really covered all of our bases while we were in production because uh, we were able to use that well to our advantage in post-production. Thank <laughs> you.